G'day, I'm Paul. If you're partial to V8 SUVs, you're gonna like this. And this is probably the last time you'll see like a proper ball tearing V8 SUV that isn't a hybrid, you know, thing with less sound and all that sort of stuff. This is the Porsche KN Turbo GT. So it's like the full hardcore performance version of the KN and sits above that top spec turbo model. So this is some proper stuff right here. This is priced at just over $350,000. If that's too expensive, the entire range kicks off at a little over 135 grand. Um, now, this competes with things like the Audi RS Q8, the BMW X6M, and the Mercedes AMG GLE Coupe. Very noisy sounding cars. Today, we're gonna to do a detailed review of this car. So if you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen. Or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a meaty V8. Okay, so let's talk design. You have eight colors to pick from, and they're all free charge. There are a couple that will cost you extra, and they're five grand extra, but it's good to see that you're getting something for free here. Uh, so Porsche logo on the bonnet there. And if you look down here, this is where everything is cooled. And this needs a lot of cooling because it has a top speed of 300 kilometers an hour. So you have uh, active louvers there. You have additional cooling off to the sides as well. Radar sensor down the bottom there black lip there with some body color down the, the bottom section of that as well. So it is a fairly aggressive looking car down the front here. And I think it is, yeah, just a testament to this thing, just eating away the miles. And even just like the fan just runs sometimes, it hisses at you, it is just a properly scary car. Uh, over here, you have a set of full LED headlights with LED daytime running lights and uh, indicator built in down here and more of that cooling element down there as well. Now around the side here, Love the look of these wheels. So 22 inch alloy wheels, gold color. It really just deviates from the norm with these uh, SUVs and they've really just given it quite an appearance from a distance. Have a look at those brakes. They are absolutely enormous. So 440 mil cross-drilled carbon ceramic rotor. You then have a 10 piston caliper on this brake here. The rear is only slightly smaller as well. So it is an enormous braking package for a car that is able to do enormous speeds. This sits 17 mil lower than a standard turbo. It's 15% stiffer. And in addition to that, you also have half a degree of negative camber on the front here as well. So that's probably going to affect the way that this uh, drives on the road. I'll explain that when we go for a bit of a drive later on. Beneath there, you have adaptive air suspension as well, so it can vary the height of this depending on which drive mode you're in. A little bit of wheel arch cladding there as well. Up the top here, you have carbon everywhere. So carbon here on the wing mirrors, camera built into the side there. And that black stuff runs all the way down the side of the car there. You have a carbon roof, some privacy glass, a carbon spoiler there as well, which is really cool. And then whip around to the back with me. So around the back here, Turbo GT. Got to admit, I'm not a huge fan of that. I don't know why they've put the exhausts there. I don't know why they wouldn't just exist on the outer edges. I'm not, you know, entirely sold on that. But this is a titanium exhaust. It has a center silencer removed. So I think this is probably going to sound pretty all right. You can actually see those titanium elements there as well. They change color as that heats up and cools down, which I think is pretty awesome. More carbon down the bottom there on that diffuser. Full LED light package along the back here with a spoiler. This extends as well. And when it is extended, this can supply up to an extra 40 kilograms of downforce to the rear of the car. So it should be pretty exciting to drive, I reckon. Let me know what you reckon about the design. Do you agree with me on the exhaust stuff down there? Let me know in the comments section below. Okay, so we are inside the Cayenne. Uh, this is what the key looks like. You've got a Porsche logo up the top there. Unlock lock boot it's in the shape of a car as well i like that uh, proximity sensing keys you can leave that in your pocket then over here you've got like a key device that you turn it looks like a key but it's not really a key and that um, flicks everything on so in terms of the design um look this is kind of classic porsche you've got the analog sport chrono up the top there you've got an analog rev gauge here in the center and just loads of Alcantara. They've really just gone to town on it. Plus your grab handles, which descend from the KN's history as kind of an off-road vehicle as well. So it is a pretty cool looking setup and I think it looks nice. Um, I don't love this center section. I, I like the way that it looks, but it marks so easily. So your fingerprints are just left on everything, which I think is just a little bit, um, a little bit annoying. The other thing as well, they're about to do a facelift of this and the spy photos that we've seen show that this has a full digital cluster like the Taycan. And, 
I, I like that, but I also still love the sort of the history behind this analog uh, rev gauge as well. So, see what that looks like when we finally test it out in person. In terms of your touch points, kind of firm but soft there and then soft on the door as well. How soft are they? We've got our gyrometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Builds quality. Yeah, that is absolutely <laughs> solid as. Uh, door test. Sounds expensive, which is good. Okay, let's talk about infotainment. So your main infotainment screen is here in the center. It's just under 11 inches in size. I think I'm glad that Porsche moved to, you know, actual modern infotainment. Some of the cars and some of the older 911 models were just a bit painful in terms of the infotainment system. So this is definitely better. It is still a little bit fiddly to use while you're driving. So some of the functions you do need to take your eyes off the road for to sort of get a proper look at it. But outside of that, it's pretty quick and um, sort of straightforward to use as well. In terms of the features, so you have AM, FM, DAB, digital radio, and that's all plumbed through a 10 speaker sound system. You then have a number of optional sound systems you can get depending on how much money, how much more money you want to spend in your car. And then on top of that, this now also has both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Previously, it didn't have Android Auto. So Apple CarPlay is wireless. This is what it looks like, full screen integration there. Nice and quick. And then this is Android Auto. So also full screen integration. Very nice. And then you also have nice speed there as well. So very good. In addition to that, you actually also have internet radio streaming. So if I click on here, this is now going to load LBC London, whatever that is, but it is streaming uh, that from the internet, which I think is a really cool setup. So uh, very impressed with that. Now, ahead of the driver, you also have another display here off to the side. Cool thing with this is you can flick through the different menus and even bring up a full-size nav menu there as well. So that is a pretty useful feature to have. Okay, let's talk safety. So you have autonomous emergency braking that'll stop the car if you don't. You've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror. Over on the wing mirror, you have a blind spot monitor. You have rear cross traffic alert. You have radar cruise control. You do have a lane keeping assistant as part of that radar cruise control system. Then on the parking front, you have both front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, quality is okay. You can see there the edges are pretty sort of blurry. Um, let's have a look out the back. Yeah, it's not too bad. I just think it could be slightly better, but you do have a stack of uh, little angles you could do here, which I reckon is cool. They even have, um, looks like it's got the carbon ceramic brakes there as well. So yeah, not too bad. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good. I think it's not too bad. Now, what about our horn test? Does it sound as expensive as it is? It's got some authority to it. Okay, practicality, we'll start off with your connectivity. So in the center console here, you have two USB-C ports. You have a 12 volt outlet in the center here as well. In terms of storing your phone, um, no wireless phone charging, which I thought was random. There's like a perfect slot for it there as well, but um, yep. you can then put your phone, I guess, wherever you want. There are a few sort of slots here that it will go into. In terms of your coffee cup, if you have a little coffee cup like I do, you run the risk of it being delittered there ever so slightly. Uh, but in terms of the bottles themselves, they fit in perfectly fine. You've got nice teeth there to hold them in place if you are going for a bit of a squirt. And the bottle fits into there. Let's see if the big bottle fits into the door as well. Yeah, it fits into there too. Very nice. Other storage. So, center console here goes forwards and backwards. Not a huge space, it's actually pretty small. And then you have glove box over here that's pretty reasonably sized as well. Okay, comfort, you have dual zone automatic climate control up the front here. You do have seat heating, but uh, seat ventilation is a no cost option. So I think it just changes the design of the seats. But um, speaking of the seats, they actually look really cool. You've got Alcantara down the center there. You've got Turbo GT Insignia up the top. They really do look like a seat that is going to hold you in place when this thing's going for a bit of a burn. Um, I also noticed on the steering wheel as well that um, some absolute sick bros have been driving this because the yellow section in the center is quite worn and that happens when you drive like this. So. Um, there you go, that's interesting. Um, in terms of the seats themselves, they have a stack of adjustments. So you can go forwards, backwards, backrest can go forwards, backwards. You can lift the front, you can lift the back. And then on the steering front, it is electrically adjustable for both tilt and reach as well. And on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Okay, second row. Um, have a look at this. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, but um, knee room, excellent. 
Toe room really good, headroom uh, not too bad. But four seater, why? because fancy, uh, and it also means that you can then put some proper bolster on your two outer seats as well to hold you in while this thing's going for a fang. Did notice with the BMW XM that we had a look at recently, even that is like the hardcore sporty model, this, the bench seat at the back was basically flat. So it meant that if you do go for a bit of a burn that your second row passengers are gonna be all over the place, but this is gonna hold them in really nicely. Uh, you have map pockets in the back of the seats here, your third and fourth zone of climate control with seat heating, another 12 volts outlet and two USB-C charging slots. A bit of storage in the center here. Then you get a center armrest with two cup holders or two and a little piccolo holder. You can also put the bottle inside the door as well. You got air vents down here, but also here as well. And in addition to that, you have ISO fix points on the two outboard seats with two top tether points. And finally, our window test. So it's auto up and down. Yeah, so close. Now, cargo space. Let's have a little look. So you got a power tailgate. Crack that open. So you have around 550 litres of cargo space available here in just that standard setup. What have we got beneath the cargo floor? A space saver spare tyre that pops out of there. Big old subwoofer in there as well. A little bit of storage off to the sides there. You also have buttons here to adjust the ride height. You can bring it up or down to make loading things into the back easier. 12 volt outlet hidden in there as well. I'll show you what it looks like with our bags in there. So bang, bang. And bang, bang. It's actually not a bad space when you consider that this swoops down at the back there. Um, and then what you can do as well to expand that space, once you remove this cargo blind, you walk around to the side of the car and drop that second row out of the way. And that expands the space to about 1,450 litres. Okay, we've just hit the road in the big old beast. So powering this twin turbocharged four litre V8, like it is the ducks nuts of engines. And I just love how versatile this engine is. They're using adaptations of this across the Volkswagen group. And it's, it's good to see that they've invested so much into it to put such a big smile on the face of any car that it's in. Um, so this, this is an interesting setup because the turbo GT goes and tries to eclipse everything that the standard turbo is about. And that means 471 kilowatts of power and 850 newton meters of torque. Like it is, it is some proper numbers there. It's up by almost 70 kilowatts of power over the standard turbo. So it's not like they've, uh, you know, they've just bumped it up by five kilowatts. They really have gone to town on this. And in addition to the mechanical changes, the, the camber at the front, they really have just wanted to focus on this being a, a, a weapon at the track if you do want to go down that path and a vehicle that you can drive day to day. So how does all that feel behind the wheel? So I've just got it in like the normal mode at the moment. If you sort of lean on the throttle, God, that noise is good. It has a degree of turbo lag and what you'll notice down here, this is our, our boost pressure. If I let that settle back down into gear and then go for the throttle again. Just watch how long that takes to build up boost. So three, two, one, throttle. Waiting, waiting, waiting. So it takes up a little while for it to do what it needs to do. The good news is the four litre V8 has enough torque on its own before uh, the, the turbochargers start doing their thing, but it is something you do tend to notice in and around the city. And uh, then when it does all finally come on board, it gives you that mighty shunt in the back. I should also mention as well, it's all sent through an eight speed torque converter automatic. Now, good news about that gearbox is you're not using a dual clutch and it is all the better for it. This engine just works so well with the torque converter and you'll see later on when we do the zero to 100, it doesn't sort of build up revs and drop the clutch. It is just a nice progressive smooth thing and I love that manufacturers are still embracing a torque converter over a dual clutch in uh, performance applications. Now let's talk fuel economy. Uh, kind of a redundant topic, I think, if you're buying this car, you're probably not gonna give too much of a crap how much fuel it uses, but the official figure is 12.6 litres per 100 Ks. We are currently averaging, oh, there you go, we're currently averaging 12.2. This has had majority highway driving, so it's not as if, uh, you know, we've just fanged it here today and it's done 12.2, but I think that figure's pretty good. I've done a couple of hot laps this morning and um, I think that kind of fuel economy for a vehicle this size is actually really not that bad. Uh, the ride. Um, 
Look, it's, it's as good as it can be for a car that is sitting on such enormous wheels like this. You can tell they've put a lot, a lot of effort into the air suspension and the adaptive damping to soften it up as much as they can. That does lead to a little bit of brittleness when you do hit consecutive bumps and it really just tends to, tends to ride a little rougher than it needs to. And I think that they're trying to compensate for its weight there by basically softening it up as much as they can. I don't know how effective it is. Okay, let's crank it up to 130. We're gonna simulate our country road and an overtake here. It's the maximum speed limit in Australia. Yeah, look, it's really good, but you do notice the air suspension is having to work really hard to keep that composed, but it is doing a pretty good job at that. A couple of high level things I thought I'd point out. I wrote them down here so I don't miss anything. It's quicker than the RS Q8, quicker than the Lamborghini Urus, so they've really just wanted to make sure that this is the fastest vehicle in their stable. Uh, it uses a water-cooled transfer case. Uh, it has a lightweight titanium exhaust with that silencer removed. We'll have a listen to that in a second as well. It has sharper turn in and more torque vectoring, more, uh, more torque vectoring effect as well. The other cool thing is when we do go for a bit more of a fang, you'll see this menu here on the right hand side that gives us our PDCC, which is the uh, mild hybrid tech that's, uh, that um, basically prevents this thing uh, having too much body roll in a corner. And the mild hybrid tech here as well also works for the stop start system. So. As I come to a full stop there, you'll see when we get to around that 13k an hour mark, it'll actually switch the vehicle off and as I roll out of the throttle again, it comes back on really nice and smoothly too. Yeah, the exhaust, so, sounds awesome just as it is, but I've configured this little diamond here to turn the exhaust on. You press that and when you get on it, it instantly fills the cabin with a crap load of noise and it sounds so good, like it is proper gruff V8 noise and it's making that noise inside the cabin here and outside as well which is what I seriously bloody love about it. Okay let's talk drive mode. So you select them here using this uh, switch on the steering wheel. You have normal individual sport, sport plus and go all the way over to sport plus because why not. So it'll lower the vehicle, it firms up the suspension, opens the exhaust and these brakes are amazing. <laughs> Oh my god, it has so much traction. Wow, it is absolutely hammering. Holy crap. This is insane. Wow. I just don't have words to describe how good this is. It has just so much turn in, like it bites so hard when you turn the steering wheel. Oh. And these brakes are really, really good. You have to get a bit of temperature into them, but once you do, pulls up the car really nicely. Oh. I, I, sorry, I should be talking, but I'm having to concentrate here. Let's give this a stab onto the back. Wow. Holy shit! <laughs> that is fucking ridiculous. Oh, I'm just blown away with that. Uh, all right, I'm gonna stick this back into normal mode here for our little country road stretch. Oh man, that is insane. This thing hauls ass. It is a heavy car, and you do feel that. Um, all right, let me just get through this. Uh, so yeah, 90 k's an hour over our dodgy stretch of road here. It does fine with that air suspension. Um, it is a little busy, but it's fine. But anyway, back to the fast driving. Yeah, the communication through the steering wheel is so good. The brakes are fantastic. It just gives you everything, everything you want and more. And when you get on the throttle, it is ready to go. Like it is not messing about at all. It is just giving you everything. And I, I yeah, I, I think that in the in the right hands, you do feel its weight because when you do get on the throttle, uh, it, it has a lot of traction, but when it does break traction, the rear end is starting to step out a little bit. In the right hands, this type of car would just be next level, and that's why it's set a record time around the Nürburgring, because it's, it's basically in capable hands, very agile uh, despite its weight. So I think that they've done an incredible job with engineering this, and um, yeah, to me, this is the ultimate, the ultimate uh, performance SUV. I just don't know how you can get better than this without having to do any aftermarket stuff. The fact that it drives like this straight out of the box 
and I just keep talking at you here, is just bloody unreal. Now, road noise. Um, look, it's not amazing. It's it's okay. It's not the worst I've heard, but yeah, with big tyres like that, sporty tyres, it does tend to pump a fair bit of uh, tyre noise into the cabin, especially if you are on a course chip country road. Um, yeah, not the end of the world, but um, it is just something to keep in mind. The other thing worth keeping in mind as well is because of that camber adjustment at the front, you do get it tram lining a fair bit. So if you do have divots in the road from overuse on freeways, it will pick those up and, and it becomes a little hard to get out of them. So uh, that is just all down to the sportier tune of this compared to a standard Cayenne. What about your visibility? Look, it is clear down the front there. The wing mirrors are fine. I see plenty down the side there. We've got a blind spot monitor as well. Visibility out the back isn't great, and that swooping profile at the rear kind of makes it a little tricky to see out of, but with all the cameras and stuff that you have here, it's really not that big of a deal. Also gonna comment on the sport response button. So if I press that, it gives me 20 seconds. <laughs> 20 seconds of maximum thrust and acceleration. It's priming everything. It's giving me 100% of its ability for 20 seconds. And I can then switch that off and on again whenever I want. So it's just a really quick way to enter attack mode without having to faff around with controls and all that sort of stuff. Okay, zero to 100 time. Um, I'm gonna put this into Sport Plus. Yeah, so like I mentioned before, there is no dual clutch. So all it's gonna do is build revs and it will then slingshot out of there. So we'll do zero to 120, so we can see how that feels. And then you'll see it come up here with something like performance launch or something like that. And then I'll just flatten the throttle and we'll see what happens. So here we go. So building revs, building revs. Oh, little wheel slip. Jesus. That is freaking insane. That is insane. Like with a dual clutch, when it drops the clutch and you get pinned back into the seat, it all happens all of a sudden and it tapers off a little. This just hooks up and bloody goes. Zero to 100, 3.48 seconds. So not quite the claim of 3.3. And I think if I did it a few more times, it'd be fine. It is quite hot today, but yeah, 3.48 is bloody awesome. And then our 80 to 120, 2.19 seconds. I mean, that is clinically insane. It's taking 2.19 seconds to get from 80 kilometers an hour to 120. Far out, very impressive. Okay, so carbon ceramic brakes, does that mean it's going to stop well from 100 k's an hour? Let's find out. Get this up to 100, jam the anchors on, and we'll see how it performs. We're just over 100 k's an hour there. Doesn't feel too bad, those tyres are bloody huge, so if anything, that should definitely help. Um, all right, let's have a little sticky V here at how we did. So 2.77 seconds, 37.68 metres. That's actually not too bad, uh, especially for a cold run because the brakes aren't warm at the moment. So um, yeah, if you do want to see how this car compares to others, both for zero to 100 and also 100 to zero, have a look at the link in the description below where we have a little comparison for you. Okay, and our all important reverse speed test, I'm gonna put this into Sport Plus because I think we need to be in the fastest setting possible. Put that into reverse, here we go. Well, that's nice and gradual, 49, 50 kilometers an hour in reverse. So if you can imagine a V8 go-kart, that's pretty much what that is. It is genuinely exceptional and it is so fast, so fast. It is just crazy to think that it exists. Um, yeah, what I mentioned earlier, this is probably gonna be the last non-hybrid uh, assisted big banger SUV. I think the next generation of all of these will have some kind of electrification, so they will be quicker, but I think they'll lose a lot of the noise, the uh, just a lot of the soul that they currently have. So yeah, look, in terms of downsides, the ride is yeah a little bit sort of on and off uh, because you have to manage that whole package. It is expensive and um, that is something you have to live with, but look, outside of that, I think it makes up for it with noise and, and it is just yeah, so much fun to drive. So let me know in the comments section below. Have you bought one of these? Are you one of the lucky few? Um, or do you have other Porsches you want to let us know about? Let us know in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.